Today we're reading The Worst Years of My Life, Middle School. Chapter 1. I'm Rafe Kachadorian, tragic hero. It feels as honest as the day is crummy that I begin this tale of total desperation and woe with me, my pukey sister, Georgia, and Leonardo the Silence, sitting like rotten sardines at the back of a Hills Village Police Department cruiser. Now there's a pathetic family portrait you don't want to be a part of, believe me. More on the unfortunate village police incident later. I need to work myself up to tell you that disaster story. So anyway, ta-da! Here it is, book fans, and all of you, and all of you in need of merit points at school. The true auto bio of my life so far. The dreaded middle school years. If you've ever been a middle schooler, you understand already. If you're not in middle school yet, you'll definitely understand soon enough. But let's face it. Understanding me, I mean really understanding me and my nutty life, isn't so easy. That's why it's so hard for me to find people I can trust. The truth is, I don't know who I can trust. So mostly, I don't trust anybody except my mom, Jules. Most of the time anyway. So let's see if I can trust you. First, some background. That's me, by the way, arriving at prison, also known as Hills Village Middle School, in Jules's 4x4. The picture credit goes to Leonardo the Silent. There's the picture for you guys. Getting back to the story though, I do trust one other person. That would actually be Leonardo. Leo is capital C crazy and capital O off the wall but he keeps things real. Here are some other people I don't trust as far as I can throw a truckload of pianos. There's Miss Ms. Ruthless Donatello, but you can just call her the Dragon Lady. She teaches English and also handles my favorite subject in sixth grade, after school detention. Also, Mrs. Ida Stryker, the Vice Principal, Ida's pretty much in charge of every breath anybody takes at HVMS. That's Georgia, my super nosy, super obnoxious, super brat sister, whose only good quality is that she looks like Jules might have looked, might have looked when she was in the fourth grade. There are more on my list and we'll get to them eventually. Or maybe not. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out. So very quickly, there's the sister. As you can probably tell, this is my first full-length book, but let's stay on the subject of us for a little bit. I, I kind of want to, but I don't know if I can trust you with all my embarrassing personal stuff, like the police car disaster story. What are you like? Inside, what are you like? Are you basically a pretty good, pretty decent person? Says who? Says you? Says your ends? Says your sibs? Okay, in the spirit of a possible friendship between us, and this is a huge, dip, huge, big deal for me, here's another true confession. This is what I actually looked like when I got to school that morning of the sixth grade. That guy right there. We still friends, or are you out of here? Hey, don't go all right. I kind of like you. Seriously, you know how to listen at least. And believe me, I've got quite the story to tell you. Chapter 2, the middle school, the middle school max security prison. Well, okay, so imagine the day your great great grandmother was born. Got it? Now go back another hundred years or so, and then another hundred. That's about when they built the Hills Village Middle School. Of course, I think it was a prison for pilgrims back then, but not too much has changed. Now it's a prison for 6th, 7th and 8th graders. I've seen enough movies that I know when you first get to prison, you basically have two choices. One, pound the living daylights out of someone so that everyone else will think you're insane and stay out of your way. Or two, keep your head down and try to blend in and don't get on anyone's bad side. 
You've already seen what I look like, so you can probably guess which one I chose. As soon as I got to homeroom, I went straight to the back row and sat as far from the teacher's desk as possible. There was just one problem with that plan, and his name was Miller. Miller the killer, to be exact. It's impossible to stay off this kid's bad side because it's the only one he's got. But I didn't know any of that yet. Sitting in the back, huh? He said. Yeah, I told him. Are you one of those troublemakers or something? He said. I just shrugged. I don't know. Not really. Because this is where all the juvies sit, he said, and took a step closer. In fact, you're in my seat. I don't see your name on it, I told him. And I was just starting to think that maybe that was the wrong thing to say when Miller put one of his triple XL paws around my neck and started lifting me like a hundred pound dumbbell. What do we have here? Dead meat. I usually like to keep my head attached to my body. So I went ahead and stood up like he wanted me to. Let's try that again, he said. This is my seat, understand? <laughs> I understood all right. I'd been in sixth grade for about four and a half minutes and I already had a fluorescent orange target on my back. So much for blending in. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a total wimp. Give me a few more chapters and I'll show you what I'm capable of. In the meantime though, I decided to move to some other part of the room like maybe somewhere a little less hazardous to, to my health. But then when I went down to sit, when I went to sit down again, Miller called over. Oh, oh, he said, that's my one too. Can you see what, uh, can you see where this is going? By the time our homeroom teacher, Mrs. Mr. Rourke rolled in, I was just standing there wondering what it might be like to spend the next nine months without sitting down. Rourke looked over the top of his, his glasses at me. Excuse me, Mr. Catch... Catch... Uh, catch... Catch... Dorian, I told him. Gesundheit, someone shouted to the entire class. And they started laughing. Quiet, Mr. Rock snapped as he checked his attendance book for my name. And how are you today, Rafe? He said, smiling like there were cookies on the way. Fine, thanks, I answered. Do you find our seating uncomfortable? He asked me. Not exactly, I said, because I couldn't really go into details. Then sit down now. Unlike Miller the Killer, Mr. Rock definitely has two sides. And I'd already met both of them. More Mr. Rock. Since nobody else was stupid enough to sit right in front of Miller, that was the only seat left in the room. And because I'm the world's biggest idiot, sometimes I didn't look back when I, when I went to sit in my chair, which is why I hit the dirt as I went down, all the way down to the floor. The good news, given the way things had started off, I figured middle school could only get better from here. The bad news, I was wrong about the good news. So that's the end of chapter two. We're going to come back with chapter three.